Welcome to the Black Madonna Speaks on the Heart of the Black Madonna channel with me, your host, Stephanie Georgia. I am the author of the Black Madonna Mysterious Soul Companion. And if you would like more information on this book and how to receive your own hard copy, electric or audio copy, please see the link below this video to the book launch page where all your questions will be answered. At the time of this recording, August 15th, in both the Eastern and Western liturgical year, it is the festival of the recognition of when the Virgin Mary crossed the threshold of life into death, that she actually did not physically die, her body and soul ascended into heaven. In the Western Christian tradition, this festival is called the Feast of the Assumption. In the East, the festival is called the Dormition of Mary. <clears throat> the word assumption in very simple terms means the body floated up into heaven. In fact, one of the definitions of assumption in the dictionary is specifically related to this festival, listing the dogma that was announced in 1950 by the Catholic Church on the reception of Mary into heaven. Dormition definition on the other hand, is, quote, death resembling falling asleep. And it is of note that in the Orthodox icons regarding the Dormition of Mary, we see her in bed with Christ above her, often also seeing a young girl in his arms. And this young girl or this infant is representative of the soul of Mary. And we see this again in this modern icon. Now, the Feast of the Assumption in Catholicism is a festival of solemnity. And in the liturgical year of the Roman Rite, the festival of solemnity is the highest rank, celebrating a mystery such as faith in the Trinity, an event in the life of Christ, his mother Mary, or another important saint. So it's interesting that Mary gets her own solemnity festivals. This observance begins with the vigil on the evening before the actual date of the feast. Now, in the Orthodox tradition, the festival of the Dormition, which is obviously still the same day, there is also a two-week fast leading up to the festival. So there's a fast that leads up to Easter, which is called Lent, then the Orthodox actually fast during Advent, which leads up to Christmas, but there's a fasting tradition before the festival of the Dormition of Mary, which shows how seriously and how elevated this event is within the Christian year. Now, while officially the Assumption of Mary became dogma in the Catholic Church in 1950, there's ample evidence of the recognition of this extra-biblical event in the earliest days of Christianity. Icons from the 5th century onward, specifically in the Eastern Church, show Mary's death and bodily raising. In an ancient liturgical icon from St. Catherine's Monastery in Mount Sinai in Egypt, and this is a pic modern picture of this monastery, which houses some of the world's oldest Christian art, which has survived iconoclasm and the Turks and everybody else. And so we have evidence of this type of festival being recognized. And in the icons which represent the liturgical year, we see evidence of this festival. You can't really see it that well in this slide, but this is a very ancient Christian slide, and there is a recognition of the Dormation of Mary in this icon. Now, something quite interesting about the Feast of the Dormition Mary is it is associated or it is accompanied with the tradition of blessing of the herbs. Now, this custom which is, has been received in the Roman Rite, represents a clear example of the transition of ancient rites into modern rites. 
and it's a recognition of what we hear in the book of Genesis that the earth produced vegetation, plants, uh, all in their kind, and that everything is actually divine. And the blessing asks for blessings over the herbs and to protect man and beast, human and beast, from any type of poisonous effect. <clears throat> now, people would bring the herbs to the altar and they would receive a special blessing. And then what's lovely is the prayer that is at the end of this service. And I'll read you the words of the prayer. And it says, Almighty Everlasting God, <clears throat> by whom word alone brought about into being the heavens, earth, see things seen and things unseen and garnish the earth with plants trees for the use of man and beast who appointed each species to bring forth its fruit in its kind not only for the food of living creatures but for the healing of sick as well with mind and word we call on you in your great kindness to bless these various herbs and fruits thus increasing their natural powers with the newly given grace of your blessing may they keep away disease and adversity from man and beast who use them in your name now, when did this festival actually come into being? That's quite a, quite a controversy. Some theologians and think that it actually started right after the death of Mary. And, but we don't know because many of the churches and recognitions of certain areas where the life of Christ existed um, that were recognized in the first three centuries were pretty much destroyed when uh, Jerusalem was destroyed and really did not get any new recognition until after the visit of St. Helen, who came to Palestine to find the relics of Christ. And she basically, through combining dreams with some old Jerusalem city archives decided where the different areas of the life of Christ actually came to be. And one of the things was to recognize um, the tomb of Mary, and this is a picture of the tomb of Mary, which is close to Mount Zion, where the early Christian communities had lived. And on the hill itself, it's considered the place of dormition, the spot of Mary's falling asleep where she had died. And the tomb of Mary was where she was buried. And at this time, uh, in the ancient time, it was called the memory of Mary. That was what the festival was called. And later it became the Feast of the Assumption. Now, What's really interesting was at the Council of Chalcedon in 551, when the bishops throughout the Mediterranean, Mediterranean world gathered in Constantinople, the Emperor Marcion asked the Patriarch of Jerusalem to bring the relics of Mary to Constantinople to be enshrined in the capital. But the Patriarch explained to the Emperor there was no relics of Mary in Jerusalem because, quote, Mary had died in the presence of the apostles, but her tomb, when opened later, was found empty. So the apostles concluded that the body was taken up into heaven. I think that's kind of interesting. <clears throat> so in 1950, the Apostolic Constitution <clears throat> the Munifestissimus Deus, uh, proclaimed by Pope Pius XII, stated that the Assumption of Mary is now a dogma of the Catholic Church. In these words, the Immaculate Mother of God, ever Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heaven. Now, what's particularly interesting was, as I said, this feast and this recognition was really quite universal, particularly in the ancient church, but it didn't receive official recognition in the Western church. The Eastern church, as far as my research shows, always had this 
festival, but not the Western. But the 1950 was just um, five years after the double explosion of the atomic bomb and, you know, in Japan. And there was this deep recognition <laughs> that humanity really needed to recognize the sacred. And there was a lot of movement within many faith traditions to do that. And so one of the responses of that was to institute this dogma, um, which I just think is interesting. Now, the Orthodox Church regards Mary as without sin. In fact, in many countries she, in the Eastern Church, she is called Bogodoritsa, or God-bearer, uh, which means that she bears, bears God. And the prayer to re, be recited on the festival of the Dormition of Mary is as follows. In giving birth, you preserve your virginity. In falling asleep, you did not forsake the world, O Theotokos. You were translated to life. O Mother of life, and by your prayers, you deliver our souls from death. Neither tomb nor death could hold the Theotokos, who is constant in prayer and our firm hope in her intercessions. For being the Mother of life, she was translated to life by the one who dwelt in her virginal womb. So the feast of the Dormition of the Theotokos, which also means Bogodoritsa, which is God-bearer, is the celebration of the fact that all humans are highly exalted in the blessedness of divinity. And this high exaltation has been accomplished by the Virgin Mary. The Feast of the Dormition is the sign, the guarantee, that the celebration that Mary's fate is the destiny of all, all humans. In other words, this feast day and remembrance is a reminder of what the symbology of the Virgin Mary is in art, that Mary is a symbol of the goal and capabilities of humanity. As you may have heard me say before and in other videos, as well as in my writings on the Black Madonna Mysterious Soul Companion, there are deep, mystery, deep mysteries for each age that we humans are to encounter, study, and comprehend in order to go forward in our spiritual evolution. The mystery during the time of Christ Jesus, that of the Virgin Mary, was a part of what the mystery of birth and death. So that was the great mystery and the whole passion of Christ, the whole shebang was all about learning, comprehending, and incorporating the mysteries of birth and death. Now, in the first few centuries of the common era, when you look through the discussions, writings, and ecumenical councils, the concept of humanity and divinity was a difficult one. How could a person be both divine and human? The answers and ways the early church theologians and saints tried to answer this question took many forms. In the early Gnostic tradition, the way it was solved was basically to say that Christ Jesus really did not occupy a body. The other great controversy was in the whole concept of how Christ was birthed. How could a mere mortal, Mary, bear a god? Was she a goddess herself? All sorts of theology and dogma was created to deal with this question of how Mary could give birth to the Son of God. Was she mortal? Was she divine? After numerous ecumenical councils and discussions, she was determined to be without sin and that she was conceived by Anna and Joachim, which we see in this uh, beautiful icon, without sin, meaning she was also a virgin birth, as we, we can see. And apparently, and I'm being a little snarky here, 
But we see in these icons where uh, Anna and Joachim basically touch foreheads, and that's how she got pregnant. There were also great discussions on how Mary came to be. Did she descend from heaven as a perfect spiritual being? Or did she, by her exemplary life and service in the entire Christ event, as the mother who bore the, chi the Christ child, did she ascend to become a god? Big, huge fights ensued over this question. Ecumenical councils where entire regions and sects were excommunicated trying to answer this question resulted. For me personally, I find these arguments interesting, mainly from a historical perspective, but missing the deeper point and purpose of both Mary and the divine feminine. The feminine is an aspect of creation that encompasses birth, transformation, and provides a vessel and container for life, the divine matrix for creation. One of the great deeds that Mary did was to set an example for us all, that we all contain divinity, that we are to say yes to divinity and to bring divinity to every aspect of what we do on earth. She also helps to solve the mystery of birth and death, that they are processes in a long journey of life, of spiritual and soul life, where the body, the earthly body is divine, but only a temporary home for our spirit and soul. So however you celebrate this most unique of festivals, I wish you many blessings. Please consider becoming a Patreon for this channel. Uh, there are many benefits to becoming a Patreon member from all sorts of levels. And there's a link below this video on how you can become involved. I take donations such as one-time donations or a dollar a month up to as much as you would like and there's benefits for all levels if you would like to obtain a copy of the black madonna mysterious soul companion you can do this through amazon kindle audible barnes and noble book depository and print on demand and again check the link for the book launch page, which has detailed instructions on how to do any of these options. And as always, I wish you blessings on your journey.